Aloha, welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part 14 of our CME CNC Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along, I strongly urge you to pause here, go check up the earlier videos in the series so that you can be on the same page as where we're at in the build process. There's a link to the manual down in the description if you'd like to follow along or if you are following along during your own build. And if you're not familiar with CME CNC's line of Delta printers, there are links to that in the description as well. So when we last left off in part 13, we had finished assembling the top. That was all done. And we had just finished wiring up the power supply and all the lower electronics. We're getting close to the end here. So we're going to start off at step 58. So let's do it. Okay, we're not going to need a lot of tools for this step. You will need a soldering iron and solder. The printer, of course, uh, as far as it's been assembled. You'll need the insulator plate, the heat bed, and eventually the glass top. <clears throat> There's also a small bag that has a resistor, a diode, and it's not going to focus on that. But there's a resistor, a diode, and some heat shrink inside of there. Do not throw this bag away. You'll also notice these yellow strips on it. That's captain tape, and that's going to be used in the step as well. The bed is just, I guess, a convenient place to put that. So it'll peel off from there. You're also going to need wire strippers and a set of needle nose pliers. And of course, I always have flush cuts handy, and we'll need the solder. So let's switch cameras and get started on that. Okay, so. Inside the base here, the first thing we're going to do is pull out the wiring that we need for this step. We're going to need the power and the ground that we have running. The, the power, the red, 12 volts, plus 12 volts, um, should be coming from the power supply. The black will be coming through the Y tower here, as well as the thermistor leads. So we're going to go ahead and pull those out, trim them off all to be about the same length. They don't have to be perfect, but I'll trim those about there. And then what we're going to do is take this insulator plate and pull those all up through there. Now the insulator plate needs to get dropped in and we'll remove it or uh, we'll fix it later but it's going to drop in with this slot towards the Z tower uh, I believe. No correction the slot will go towards the front of the printer so it will go in roughly that orientation. The slot is there for the LED to sit in. Okay, so we're going to just set these wires aside for the moment. And we're going to bring in the heat bed. Um, now we're going to need to solder on this, so I'm going to go ahead and slide the printer out of the way so we can just work directly on the table at first. The first thing that I'm going to do is take some solder and I'm going to prep the minus, the two plus, the two labeled RES, and the four thermistor pads. And we're going to prep those and put a little bit of solder on the pads. I'm assuming you already have your soldering iron heated up and the tip cleaned. And we're just going to tin it a bit going to heat the pad and let a bead of solder flow down onto it. Okay. 
now that we've done that, we're going to prep both our resistor. Oh, and I missed two pads over here for the LED. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and open our components bag and take out our three pieces. Now, I'm not following the manual exactly step by step here. Uh, the order isn't necessarily significant at this point. Uh, we just need to get it done. So we're going to look at our resistor. The resistor doesn't have a polarity sensitivity. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers basically to grab it like so. And then I'm going to use that to create a bend on it so that we have a nice even bend there that should be spaced out just about right for here. And it looks like I went a little bit too wide, so I'm going to narrow that up for the slightly skinnier part of the needle nose. like so. And make sure that's going to fit across the pads like that. Let me move this camera down closer maybe if I can. Apologize we're fighting the glare. I can't see with that without that overhead light in here. You can't see with it. So let's try to work around it as much as possible. Okay, now that that's there, and we have the little bit of solder on there, I'm going to use a slotted screwdriver. Prefer a non-magnetic one that does what that. And I'm going to hold one side down, and we're just going to put the heat on it and let it flow into the solder like so. And then we're going to repeat that for the other side. Like so. Now once that's on there and you're sure you have a good solder, if you need to add more, you can take your needle nose pliers, I'm sorry, your uh, your flush cuts and trim these off. Bend them up if you need to. And that's done. Okay, now we're going to do the the red diode. And here I'm going to consult the manual. You'll notice that one of the leads is longer than the other here. For the red diode, the longer lead, this one, is our plus. So what we're going to do down here on this side is I am going to take this to raise it up just a hair. We're going to fit that into the hole and kind of bend that down into a U-shape like so. And again, you want to make sure your wires aren't touching, that you have the proper orientation. I'm going to drop that into the hole, and we're going to solder those leads the same way. Okay, now, one thing you want to do here is see where that pushes through the top. Once you get it soldered on, you're going to want to just push it back down with your thumb so that it's flush with the top um, because the glass bed is going to sit on top of there, so you don't want it to protrude. 
Okay, the next and most challenging step here is going to be the thermistor, which is going to go here. Now, your thermistor should come. It's a very tiny glass probe, and it is very fragile. I'm trying to pick it up to show you now. It should come with a piece of heat shrink on it. You're going to pull that off, and you'll notice that there are two wires. So we're going to set that back down for a second. You're going to cut off about 8 to 9 millimeters, or roughly the distance from there to there if you scope it out. Hopefully it doesn't fly away. We'll hold it this time. We use that as our reference for the second piece. Don't lose that in case you ever need it later to replace the thermistor. And now the fun part, we're going to take this, and again you want to be very careful with this little tiny glass bead at the tip, and we're going to slide one of these microscopic pieces of heat shrink over the end. Okay, once those are all the way down at the front, you want to make sure they go all the way up to the bulb without breaking the bulb, but they need to be right up against the end there. Then you're going to just give that a small bend, like so, for a 90 degree angle. And I know that's really microscopic and hard to see. Okay, then you're going to set that down into the hole in the center of the bed and we're going to solder these tiny little thin wires on either side here to those front two pads. Again, I'm going to use my screwdriver to hold it in place. It's such a thin wire, it doesn't take a lot of solder, but you do want to make sure it's a solid connection. If your bead had popped up, you want to make sure that it's down in the hole, and make sure that you have a good solder point on both of those. If you do, you can trim that away. Okay, now this is where that captain tape comes in that I mentioned earlier that was on this bag. You're going to want to Peel yourself off of the bag roughly about an inch or so. Be careful not to let it fold back up on itself. You're going to want to cut that with your flush cuts or a pair of scissors. And we're going to use that you hold the thermistor in place like so. Um, I just used one piece, but we're going to put a second piece on there just to make sure that it's held down good. The Captain Tape is special in that it can handle high temperatures. So it's not going to melt or come off as the bed gets hotter. Um, in fact, in the older days of 3D printing, you used to find a lot of times printers were actually, uh, or hot ends were actually wrapped in captain tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these, with the, uh, the resistor and the LED since I have the extra tape here. Um, all that's going to do is give us a little bit of insulation, electrical insulation there. Uh, should that solder joint or something come loose from heating the bed up. Okay, this part's done. Now the fun part is going to be soldering the leads from the printer to this. So we can set that down and let's maneuver the printer so that we can get the wires back on here. 
Okay, so we're going to start off by stripping back um, about six millimeters or quarter inch off both the red and the black wires here. Like so. The black is going to go to the minus, the red is going to go to the two plus. What we're going to do is kind of fan these out and smash them a little bit so that they're a little bit wider, like so. I'm going to use my screwdriver again to hold this down like that. I'm going to flatten that as much as possible. And I'm going to start off with the soldering iron, just pushing it down and trying to wick up that solder that we put into it. Okay. Then we can take our regular solder as it heats up and add the rest of it to build that bridge. Yeah, as you remove your soldering iron, you want to make sure you use your screwdriver to hold it down until the solder hardens or, or cools, I guess, uh, would be the word. So make sure that you don't get a cold solder. Oh, lovely. And of course, I overheated that and melted my soldering iron to it. So note to self, don't use a ESD safe plastic solder or plastic screwdriver to hold it down. Let me switch gears here. I'm going to unsolder that. Like so. I'm going to cut that off where I melted it through. We're going to fan that out again. And this time, I'm going to heat this up first since we have so much more solder on there. I'm going to heat up the pool and then go in with the wire on top of it and go in with the solder. That looks like a good solid solder joint. We're going to pull the red wire around going to fan it out a little bit. And this time I'm going to try that slightly differently. I'm going to add more solder in to the middle of this. Get a fluid ball. and then get it in there to wick into it. Okay, those are the hard two. So we're going to let those cool for a moment just to make sure that they're good. And then we'll bend them back up out of the way like so. The next two are going to be the two thermistor wires which are going to solder to these two pads. And again, unfortunately, there's that glare. So I'm hoping that you guys can see this okay. I'm going to take the thermistor wires. These should be fairly painless. We're going to strip off a couple of millimeters off the front. Get my smaller wire strippers. Okay, now these are not polarity sensitive, so you can use either one for either one. Doesn't matter which. So I'm just going to basically get that on there like so. 
I'm going to use my slotted screwdriver to hold it back down again. And we're just going to sink it in. Okay. Now we're going to make sure that those are not joined or touching anywhere. If you have any wire that is exposed on the other side of your solder joint, go ahead and snip that off. And I'm going to go ahead and, since we have some extra, put some of the tape on that as well. Theory says once this is mounted, it's never moving again. But if you ever have to take it apart to service it, you don't want it to be uh, snapping apart, right? So let's get that down. And that is done. So now we can mount that on top of here. Now we can mount that on top of there. So let's do that. I'm going to lift this up and lift this guy up. And we're going to let those wires go back through. like so. Kind of pull those out the bottom side. We want to make sure that our LED lines up with the LED slot, which is over there. Right there. You're going to pull those down through, make sure that they're sitting good. And we're going to Make sure that our wires are not catching anything and we don't want them to go into that fan on top of the power supply. We want to make sure we have the best airflow possible. So kind of dress those in as you lay it down. We'll drop in that base. Drop on the power supply on top. Um, kind of maneuver it a tiny bit if you need to to make sure that it is facing the right direction, which I am totally backwards, or totally off. We want it to go this way. So you want that red, the CME CNC to face the word Rostock Max at the front, and you want that red there. Take a peek underneath the side here to make sure that there's a um, the wires are good. You can go ahead and drop your glass bed on top, like so. And you can now use these arms in a cross pattern, like so, to hold your bed on. And if it's not sitting anywhere, then you correctly, like this back corner isn't, which you guys can't see on the camera, but right there. If it's not sitting correctly, then we need to loosen it up and find out why. All right, there we go. So loosen those screws up if it doesn't level, and that lowers the, the blocks that those sit on. And now you should be able to tighten those down. So that wraps it up for step 58 and the subassembly of the bed. That's it for this step. So there will be one more segment after this in the construction process where we will finish covering up this plate and install the acrylic panels on the top. We'll install the missing panels down on the base to finish that up. We'll install the arms and the effector and we'll plug it in and we'll do up a power up test so we'll see you next time on practical printing aloha